What's up guys? This is a uh, day in the life of the wolf. Um, it is 12.16 a.m. and I am just having a cup of coffee of getting ready to go to work. So uh, this is going to be sort of a, a little vlog before we get into the uh, tutorial. So yeah, um, I'm going to finish my coffee and then uh, we're going to go to work. Let's do it. So we just finished all the mop work and uh, now we get to enjoy the fruits of our labor. So yeah, uh, that's that job finished. As you can see, the floors are magnificent. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna get ready for job number two. It's 25 after four and uh, our next job starts at five. So yeah, let's get after it. It's uh, 109. I got to go home early today, so 12 hour day. Uh, we're headed home now, and uh, hopefully, when I get there, I uh, can get some sculpting done. Anyways, we'll uh, check back with you guys when we get to the workshop. All right, so miniature splicing. What is it and uh, how do we do it? So miniature splicing is actually when you take two models that have no business whatsoever being together and you put them together. Um, so the model that I'm going to use for this video is this guy right here. So this is going to be a centigore for my Wolves of Chaos. Uh, beasts of Chaos, 
Slanesh, whatever army. Okay, so this is two models that have completely no business being together, but I needed a Centigore that was a, also a wolf. So what I did was I took a torso from a Hellstrider and this wolf miniature, which is a miniature from Wild West Exodus called Hunting Wolves, um, and took the head off the wolf, a little bit off of the shoulders. You can see we got this nice big, like, flat where it was sawed off, uh, and tacked on the Hellstrider torso, and then I just put the wolf head onto the Hellstrider. So, what we're going to do is we are going to take all of this and make it look like it's supposed to be together. So, be right back. We're going to get with the uh, tools and putty and stuff we're going to use, and I'm going to go through all that first. So, for this, we're actually going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to use Magic Sculpt. Um, the reason why is because this stuff sets a lot faster, so as we build up the areas that need to be built up, it'll set quicker, and then we can sculpt on top of it with our green stuff. Um, you can actually also mix this with green stuff uh, to increase the um, curing time so that it, it cures faster. Increase. Decrease the uh, curing time. So... What we're going to do is we're going to mix some of this up and then we're going to use our gap filling techniques to fill out all of the areas that are on the miniature that need to be sort of bulked up or and whatnot. So we're going to mix some of this up and uh, we'll be right back after we do that. All right, so we got our magic sculpt all mixed. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the areas that need attention here. So obviously the back of the head to the neck. So the plan basically is here is that we want to build up the area around where the torso meets the wolf and where the head meets the torso. So what we're going to do is we're going to bulk up the back of the neck. Stay on camera. We're going to back up, bulk up the back of the neck. We're going to bulk up this area right here. We don't want to do it too much because we don't want it to look like he's got sort of a pot belly thing going on here. And the area in and around here. And then after the magic sculpt uh, sets, we're going to come back in and we're going to sculpt in some fur going down part of his back here, some fur going up this part of his back. And then we're going to sculpt in part of his shoulder here, bringing this up and yeah, it gets into the anatomy of centaurs and whatnot. But anyways, so let's, let's get this started. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start by bulking out the back of the head going into the neck. Um, you always, when doing this, want to make sure that when you're adding stuff on, you want to... Start smaller, because it's way easier to add onto than it is to take away. Now, when you're using ma Magic Sculpt to, uh, to sort of bulk out an armature or doing something like this, and you're using water as a lubricant, uh, it's important not to use too much, as I'll... Act, I'll you know what, we're just going to show you what happens. Okay, so I've got a ton of water on the end of my tool right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plaster this on. So you can kind of see it's it's wet there. Okay, we're going to start pushing this around. And what actually happens when you use too much water with Magic Sculpt is it'll actually start to break it down. And it'll actually go all slimy and gross. You can see... It's actually leaving residue on my tool now. Okay, so don't use too much water. Uh, there is sort of, you, you got to trial and error. It, it takes a bit of practice, but 
Okay, so again, we're just using our gap filling technique. Uh, we're just pressing it in, uh, making sure that uh, we've got it all in where it needs to go. And remember, we're going to be sculpting on top of this with more green stuff. So neat and being all neat and tidy isn't all that important. What we're looking to do is just create a structure that we can sculpt on top of after. So again, we're just packing it in there, making sure that all of these gaps are being filled. <clears throat> okay. So, looking at this from the side, you can see that the back of his skull is a little light. So we're gonna we're gonna add just a tiny bit more to the back of his head, just so that the basic shape of what we're after is there. And we're just going to blend that in with the rest of it. Make sure that he's actually got a back of his neck here. Flatten out the top again because we did all that pushing at the bottom so when you push from the bottom and go up it's always gonna move everything the joys of working with like clay all right so for the purposes of what we're doing right now that is good enough so now that we've got that done we're gonna move into bulking out uh, the bottom of his torso here and we're gonna start at the back and then once the back is done the reason why we're doing the back first uh, is because if it's gonna be a lot easier because we need so much more coverage in the front that if we push from the back uh, towards the front we can always utilize that stuff that we push towards the front because this needs so much more coverage than the back does and that's an important thing to think about when you're sculpting too is if you have excess material that you don't want to trim off um it's important to think about the direction that you're gonna sort of sculpt it in so that you can actually utilize all of the material so here we go again we're just like I said, we're just basically right now doing the exact same thing we did in the last video where right now we're just filling gaps. Um, we want to make sure that everything is seamless. And together, I'm going to bulk this all out. And then where the real magic happens is when we go in and sculpt over top. And uh, sort of the like the whole point of me doing this is, is that when you guys are doing conversions and stuff like that, a lot of the time we'll use parts that don't come from a miniature at all. And a lot of the times I'll see pictures of these really cool conversions, but you can totally tell that like something just doesn't belong like you'll you'll look at it and it just doesn't quite look right and i want to help that not happen so hopefully this helps you guys do your own conversions where it looks like that's how the miniature was sculpted to begin with all right so we got a bit of the back i want to bulk this out a bit more it's a bit too much. <clears throat> so again, we are going to uh, be sculpting over this, but I just want to make sure that uh, we have a good base to start off with. 
because this is not only going to make it easier on us later because there's going to be less building up with the green stuff that we have to do but it's also pretty cost effective because magic sculpt is in all intents and purposes cheaper than green stuff um, so if you use this stuff to bulk out your sculpts before using the green stuff to put all your details in well then you're gonna have more green stuff to work with on other things okay so we've just bulked out his back a little bit there okay try and stay in frame here and then we're gonna start working on the front Okay, I'm just going to widen this out a bit because I think it's going out of focus a little bit too much. Okay. Okay. So. Now, I've been looking at pictures of centaurs and stuff and a lot of the time you'll see that they have these like two muscles that'll be like right in the direct center which are essentially the chest muscles and then their shoulders kind of sit in the front so what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna put two dollops of magic sculpt on here for right now where are you get over here okay <clears throat> there another one right next to it okay that's a, another thing that makes sculpting a lot easier too if you sort of make it the basic shape before you put it on and then after you can move it and push it around to be the shape that you want it to be Okay, so we're just going to flip this around quick for a better angle at it. Again, this is the same basic concept as filling a gap, right? The only difference is, is that we're trying to maintain a certain shape here, which is basically a cylinder. Um, we're trying to elongate it. <clears throat> excuse me, elongate it a little bit so that it reaches uh, the bottom area right here. And again, we're just, you just got to play around with it until it, you're happy with how it looks. So we're just going to continue to sort of push this stuff around. Get this up into his belt here a little bit. And then we're going to start going on the other side. Again, try and uh, be mindful of where you're holding on to the miniature. Um, it's probably best to actually have this uh, mounted to something when you're doing this, just to make it so that you're not in danger of actually touching any of the stuff you put on previously. just smoothing everything out trying to maintain the two separate muscles here we don't want them to look like one massive blob okay so let's have a look at that from the front this one needs to be a little bit longer so we're just gonna gently pull it down Again, smoothing out the other side so that it matches. You gotta be careful too, sometimes uh, your tool can slip and uh, you'll put a, a line in it with like the corner. Um, in case you guys are wondering like what I'm doing here, it's a, a lot of the time uh, 
I think it's just a habit from painting. Like a lot of the time I'll wick my brush off just on my thumb and I have a tendency to do the same thing. I'll wick water off my tool with with my thumb and that. It's just a, just a thing. So in case you were wondering why I'm constantly going like this. Okay, so there is effectively the, the two chest muscles. Now we didn't, I don't think we actually shaved off enough right here so this side we're we're gonna leave for right now and when we come back with the green stuff we'll just sculpt over this with the green stuff there's no sense in bulking up an area that's already what seems to be too uh, wide this side however we did take off enough so we're just gonna get another little dollop of magic sculpt here And essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to cover this whole flat and try and make it look. So what we're going to do is we're going to push this in to the seam of the chest muscle that we just did over here. And we're also going to blend it this way so that it comes over top of the shoulder of the actual wolf miniature here. And we're going to blend it down into this so that it looks like one cohesive piece and then when we come back with the green stuff we will sculpt fur over top of this so just flatten this out again we're not pushing crazy hard we're just kind of poking at it and coaxing it into where we want it to go. If you're having trouble or if there's not enough material there, you can always just go on to the actual chest muscle itself and gently bring it down and that'll coax that edge right into there. And then you'll end up with a a relatively seamless blend but like I said we're we're gonna be sculpting over top of all of this with green stuff so we're not too particularly worried about it at the moment um, okay so we're just gonna go over this edge now we're pushing a little bit harder because we want to coax it over that sharp edge from where we actually cut the miniature <coughs> we're actually gonna add a tiny bit more of this magic sculpt just to hide that edge so where we're actually going to place it is right under in here and that again that's just to help hide that little bit of an edge that we ended up with from slicing this wolf's head off okay Now we're just pressing and blending that in. When you guys are doing this, uh, again, it's just a lot of uh, pushing and pulling, smoothing stuff out looking at it, revisiting areas that you think are a problem until you are 100% happy with it, okay? So we have a little bit of a gap right in here, so we're just gonna get our clay shaper in there, smooth everything all out. <clears throat> and there we go so that is the immediate gaps for this one filled now we're going to let this stuff set it should take an hour maybe two for it to sort of firm up to be hard enough for us to actually sculpt on top of 
And when that happens, we will be back and we're going to start um, sculpting and adding fur on top of this. And yeah, so we'll be back when this is all set up. All right, so now that everything is set, we are going to start sculpting on top with the fur. and We're going to make all this stuff fit together. Um, so where we're going to start is in the front there, we want to make sure that the flow and direction of the fur is correct. So we're going to start with these chest muscles that, uh, this guy has, and then we're going to move on to the shoulder from there. So here I'm just sort of flattening it out, making it the basic shape of where I want the fur to be. And then we're going to go in there with our blade tool and we're just going to sort of put some lines in there. Um, that's probably one of the most important pieces of advice that I can give is don't think about it as fur just yet. Think about it as I'm just putting lines in green stuff and uh, I'm going to make sure that it's in the flow and direction that it's supposed to be in. So I'm just kind of blending the edges in that here. And... Uh, trying to get a decent angle while recording this was extremely difficult. Uh, that's why I'm doing a voiceover for this part because it's much easier than trying to sculpt and make sure you're in camera and talk at the same time. So yeah, perhaps I should have sped this up a little bit, but here we, here we are. So again, I'm just continuing to put lines into the green stuff uh, this is just giving me a basic shape for the the different kind of uh, fur tufts that I want to be in this particular part of uh, his torso waist top of it, it, his thigh I guess I, I, I don't know anatomy of centaurs is weird <clears throat> So we're uh, we're coming back in with our flat-headed uh, silicone tool now, and we're just sort of exaggerating some of the uh, some of the marks that we we put in there, flattening some of the edges out. Because uh, a lot of the time, when you use a bladed tool to uh, like sort of press lines or whatever into your green stuff, it'll actually uh, round everything off. And I I want this to match the fur from the actual wolf itself there so which is much more hard lines so we're we're trying to essentially duplicate that it's important too that uh, you make sure that in the area around where you're wherever you're sculpting um, you want to make sure that all the edges are blended because this is what's really gonna help uh, sell the conversion in the end uh, you don't want people to see the actual um, where the green stuff ends and the model begins so to speak Oh, out of focus. Come on, man, amateur. All right, so uh, now we're gonna take our pin. Oh, are we? No, we're going back to our bladed tool. Again, I'm just sort of refining. Uh, when you're working with green stuff, it's a lot of back and forth. We're just sort of putting some of those lines back in that the flathead uh, destroyed. Now we're going in with the pin tool. So what we're doing here is we're actually stabbing in underneath uh, the lines that we put in. 
and we're picking up each individual strand of fur and we're pulling it up and then we're pr like just gently pulling it back down and what this actually does is it gives your fur depth so instead of it just being like a flat piece of green stuff with a bunch of lines in it you're actually gonna have a like a hard texture to it that when you go to paint it is going to be easier to take a wash or a dry brush or whatever and it also just it it looks better this uh sort of final step is uh, sort of my secret to how i get my fur to look decent um so yeah we're just using the pin going in there and we are stabbing underneath and then pulling up and then we're just sort of taking the tool and dragging it back down so that the uh, tip of the fur isn't like all wonky and there you go there's what it looks like after that's done all right so now we've got the fur all sculpted in as you can see uh, we followed the muscle structure and whatnot so now what we're gonna do is we're going to put a belt on this guy we're gonna blend everything going uh, further up the torso so here I am just putting a small strip of green stuff on his back and we're gonna start blending that in and creating a belt so that uh, it essentially matches what he's got going on in the front there and it's going to give us a nice bit of layering on top of that fur as well it's going to add a lot of depth to what we've actually done and uh, that's an important thing to remember when you're working with green stuff is that uh, you want to work in layers so that what you have going on uh, has more depth to it everything it's like with painting when you create more uh, sort of visual depth uh, points of interest it it just looks better so here we are we're uh, we're ensuring that those hard lines are on the edge of the belt because it's a piece of leather work it's not like uh, you want a hard edge there so that you can tell the difference between everything that's surrounding it so and we're just using the edge of our silicone tool and this pin now I'm just putting a seam in the back of the belt uh, we'll put some stitches in there later we're just cleaning it up with the sculpting tool again here and yeah there's what that looks like um yeah going pretty good next up we're gonna we're gonna put some hair on this guy so we're gonna get a water green stuff ready and uh, we're essentially just gonna put a wad on the back of his head uh, we're going to blend it in and then we're just going to put uh, some lines in it to start with. Again, uh, an important thing to remember when you're doing fur or hair or anything like that. It's important to layer your green stuff up. So you want to start from the bottom and work your way up. Uh, so you're essentially sculpting the underneath layers before you uh, sculpt the, what is finally going to be seen like you're going to see parts of what i'm doing right here but not all of it and uh yeah it just you you want to create depth with when you're doing hair or fur just to make sure that everything's all good so again we're just uh sculpting putting some lines in there cleaning those lines up uh, we're going to create more depth with our pin tool here we're just deepening those lines and yeah that's what that looks like so and here's the final product so that is miniature splicing in a nutshell so uh if you have any questions comments leave them in down below and i'll see you guys on the next one